You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. The potato peelings in the sink did not turn into vodka as I had hoped. I only start to need a drink. After the liquor stores have closed I heard you change your name again But don't you change your hair It was the only thing I liked about you In the end La 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 All right, this is how drunk I am after getting Margot Wallenberg, one of my favorite people ever to get finally on the podcast who said, "I don't know what a pod is." Yes, this is a a podcast with Margot Wallenberg as we go slowly drunk history into a woman that is fucking fantabulous. I'm fucking hammered. This is the end of drunk history going into the beginning. Click. Did you hang up? No, I just said click. No, it's a fucking good reference. Click. Did you just say click? Did you hang up? No, I said click. Student bodies. Is the answer. Uh, so you say your favorite place is Anchorage, right? Yeah, for, for performing. For a while. For the audience. Yeah. No, not for performing. Again, that was that was a while ago. He got, well, you did a show recently though. Fine to mediocre, but it was the people up there. It's just a ton of great friends. Oh God, the Alaskans are fabulous. I was I was telling Triple G Greg that I got a hundred and twenty one pound halibut up there on a Nadilchik. Oh, I got a fourteen pounder, and I thought my my arms are gonna fall off trying to pull it in a boat after dragging. Well, you know, it's that like fourteen. F- that's they're flat. You know, yeah. what happens is I was all happy, you know, and then that sucker came up and saw the, and man, that line went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, holy shit, I just about went off the boat. When I first got on that boat, this big old, uh, God, I love the Canucks, big old red-headed, hey, where's your man? And I go, hey, I don't need a man to go fishing, <laughs> you know. And my dad had just died, and I used to go fishing with my dad all the time. And I just know, I had packed up, and then he was died, I went up there, and then from there I went on up to Alaska. So... I was up there. I just know he was putting fish on my hook. And he goes around. He goes, and it says, no drugs, no booze. Well, I had a six-pack of beer. I had a can of wasabi, you know, and a little soya. And the guy looks at me. He goes, you have been fishing before, Missy. I said, yeah, I have, you know. So I impressed him with that. I was the only one there. It was me and five guys. I was the only one that caught. You're only allowed two halibut. You know, and and he said, Missy, just keep bringing them in. These guys aren't going to catch shit. I mean, you can give them to them later. I said, fine. <laughs> so that's what I did. It was too funny. I was out of where? Out of Nanelchik, oh, yeah. which is the south. Yeah, uh, heading down towards uh, Homer. Yeah, just, just north of Homer. God, I loved Homer. But that was so funny. Every time I'd move around the ship, these five dudes would run around and you know, following me around the, the 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 fishing boat, this guy just cracked up. This big old redheaded son of a gun. He was said, this a day trip or were you? Out it was there? a day trip. It was just a day trip out of the mill chick. But these people used to own a fishing boat that went out of San Carlos. The first thing I said to him, I says, "Okay," I said, "I can't jump off the side of the boat and take a pee like I could down in San Carlos." I said, "What's the drill?" You know. So he told Protocol. me. Protocol. Yeah, what's the protocol? They had a an indoor john, but Doug, you want me to look for something? 
No, it's that chick that wrote that erotica, but her site is mostly gross pictures of her half naked. I just wanted to get some drops <laughs> yeah. of Marga reading erotica. <laughs> I love that one. He used. plunged his warm tongue into my waiting mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he cupped my bosoms with his strong hands. <laughs> yes. I lapped it all up. <laughs> No, the idea is to sound as as hard as possible. <laughs> God, it's some some girl that's a fan that would she sent me a book of her erotica, which is so antiquated anyway, and it's just so silly to read. So I thought it would be funny to f- fuck with her, but I can't. I, I think we finally gave the book to your thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man, that breeze feels good. Football season, right around the corner. Oh, God. I'll be gone for a lot of it. I spent like, two or three years ago, three years ago, I wouldn't work any uh, Saturdays on the road, so I could be here for Sunday football for every game of the season, and it turned into such a pain in the ass. I fucking hated football by the end of it. Yeah, I can imagine. Up at you know, 8 in the morning cooking for no. everyone, which I like to do occasionally, but yeah, when but, it's every you, week. You set yourself up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I just, you just work four days on the road, get home on Saturday afternoon, no. going, oh, shit. No, it's not. I got to go to Safeway. <laughs> yeah, the dread, I call it the dreaded Safeway. I get up early and can get it out of the way, but if it's after two in the afternoon and it's crowded. Oh, I know. I call it the dreaded Safeway. Because, you know, when I go to Safeway, that's where you run into everybody you know. Yeah, you, you can't. If you have you know, no social skills, you better have a baseball hat and yeah, exactly. Hollywood well, sunglasses. One, yeah, one time I went in there, I wore the most absolutely atrocious fucking outfit because I just wanted to get in and get out there. Everybody pretended they didn't know me, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I figured I can do uh, I can do incognito pretty well. Uh, yeah, well, you're my height and my voice. It's, <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're fucked. I'm, I'm just totally fucked. How I tall guess. are you? I'm only 5'11 now. Now? Yeah, I used to be 5'13", but, <laughs> but my my back's all, you know, scrunched You're up. shrinking? And, yeah, well, yeah, those those little vertebrae, and you know, those things are squished up. And, yeah, I'm about 5'4", with my uh, with my bar posture. If I stand up straight, I'm 5'7 seven and a half. Wow, well, <laughs> well, my mom, when I was, you know, she was 5'5 five, five and a half, and she'd come up to me and go, I was like 5'10 when I was 12, and I weighed... 100 pounds, I looked like a Buchenwald baby. You know, it was all, I was this big, I had these huge lips, ears, feet, and hands, man. It was just, you know, I was just, that's how I developed my sense of humor because it kept me from just beating the shit out of everybody, you know. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? They had to move in a, um, a bigger desk for me in fourth grade because I just, <laughs> I was just too gangly and... <laughs> You know, Where were you? In Fontana, California, Kaiser Steel Town. Was that Fontana? Is that it's South in Southern State? California oh, near yeah. Riverside? Yeah, right. the Inland Empire. Empire. <laughs> the big place to go in those days was uh, Riverside to the Riverside Inn. Wait, 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 was that Salton Sea era? Salton Sea. We used to go out there when it was still nice. Yeah. Yeah. That place is fascinating. Isn't it amazing? There's, uh, John Waters did a documentary about it that's incredible. He did? Yeah. I love John Waters. I had no idea the history of the place. That it was, oh. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. We drove through once. I want to drive through again. We were going to drive through when we were going out to uh, Palm Springs. But when you go into to... Salt and Sea when I was a kid, you'd automatically float. There was just so much salt in it. Yep. You were just... Yeah, just like the dead fish now. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, straight to the top. Really, it was really cool. Were you there when it was actually a resort? Like, there was a planned community that was supposed to be a huge, like, development. I probably was. It yeah. was. Well, okay. It, <laughs> it was were a there huge any? Development. Yeah, I mean, were there shops open? Were people I can't uh, remember, walking I was the streets? A kid, you know. 
Right now, there's probably 13 people there in a bar. I think that's it. Well, at least I've got a bar. Yeah. Where were we with that one guy said he parked his car? He, he used to leave his uh, company truck there or something, and they oh, stole it. Yeah, yeah. And then two weeks later, he got another car, and they stole it. No. Because <laughs> he would park it, like, out at, 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 at this some parking lot dock or something somewhere no, near you, there you, you would park and then they'd pick you up so it's yeah. kind of like a, a, a crew, carpool a crew kind truck. of thing a yeah. crew truck because oh, oh. he was construction and he kept he would park it out there and it would sit mm. all day long it, it would take what three days for you go hey this guy is going to be here tomorrow and he's going to leave for 10 hours I mean that's oh, exactly man. what they did and then they just kept stealing his truck what I had a friend of mine one time and he was he, he didn't he, he had a, a loan on a vehicle you know and he wasn't being able to make the loan or anything. So he brought it down. He drove it down to across from uh, the Gay 90s, you know, down in Naco. Gay 90s, which is uh, a, the bar right on the Naco border Right on the here. border there, yeah. So And it's it's from the 1890s. Oh, That's God. why they're stuck with the name. <laughs> oh, it's not in the In fucking 19- redneck militia, man. Arizona border. They're stuck with the historic name Gay 90s. It was the only <laughs> bar in town. The 1990s? It, it goes no, no, back over a century. Yeah. <laughs> the, anyhow, he thought, well, I'll just leave it there with the keys in it and somebody will steal it and I won't have to pay. He left it there for two weeks. No one would steal it. He was so <laughs> pissed off. He was just like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, it's drugs sick. and trunk, free shrimp cocktail. Yeah, yeah right. It just no, nope, nobody touched it. They, I guess they figured it was a setup or something. Bait car, isn't yeah. That, isn't that weird? He just figured, oh, no problem, man. I'll, you know, that way I can get out of pay, making my payments and get a new vehicle, you know, whatever. Smart thinking. <laughs> it didn't work. How's your drink? You good? Um, Need ice? Ice and some of that stuff. All of it? The whites? And some of that grapefruit. Oh, man. I was raised in a grapefruit orchard. We used to have all the wet bags come in. They'd come in with these uh, things. That's fine. And and they had... Um, they'd, they'd go out and pick all the grapefruit in our... in our Yeah, a little splash. And my brother just loved, loved them. So every, when they were there, there, and they adored my brother, who's this little guy with eyelashes and one of his eyebrows. Of course, the kid got it. You know, the boy got the eyelashes. Not me. No. <laughs> little kid? Yeah. Your brother's little? Well, no. He's with six, big, long eyelashes, and you're well, he was, six foot 13? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's 6'3 he's <laughs> now, but right. and my sis 5'10 and a half. We were, she was 5'10 and a half. I was 5'13, and my brother was 5'15 or Are you six, Dutch by any chance? Uh I think Croatian. You think? Well, I did a DNA test. It turned out we're, we got some Croatian blood in us. Right. And my mother was uh, English, you know, Stockton, California, signed the Declaration of Independence. Doesn't make me any different. The Dutch, the tallest people in the world. Are they? Yes, they are. Fact from my filthy Scottish manager. He uh, has lots of facts that he likes to tell you when he's mm. drinking. Are you aware that ants are aware of their own mortality? <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Did you read that in Smart Fuck magazine? <laughs> this is the Doug Stanhope podcast, episode whatever it is. And uh, I'm here with, uh, in Bisbee, in the funhouse, with Greg Chaley and my favorite Bisbee character of them all, Margot Wallenberg. Hi there. <laughs> Margot, who uh, is kind of the reason I'm here. Uh, yeah, that's true. When I, I uh, before I moved here, I came here all the time, and uh, I was shooting a pilot uh, for a, it was like they were going to try to sell it to Travel Channel or what it was. I knew it was never getting picked up, but the idea was I was hitchhiking, and then they'd film the people that picked me up hitchhiking. They put oh, lipstick okay. cameras in their car when they pulled over. Hey, we're doing a thing, and then just talk to the you know people that pick up hitchhikers, which seems interesting. Uh, so they let me decide where to film it, and I go, hey, we'll do you know, uh, Benson to Tombstone, Tombstone to Bisbee, because they wanted to get two different people for the pilot, uh, and that gives me a reason to go back to Bisbee. And that was right when we were leaving Los Angeles. We hadn't decided 
Renee and I was with Renee at the time, and uh, we were debating where to move to. And it was Portland and Austin were on the short list. I wanted to move to Reno. She had no sense of humor about Reno. <laughs> Reno's a really fucking funny place. It is. Think. Yeah. Reno was close, right? You, I mean, is, she was upset, but that was on your short short. Yeah, list. she. I'm not living in fucking Reno. Yeah. I mean, like, it's funny. Who? <laughs> no one else lives in Reno. Uh, I like Reno. I love it. And I counted cards. I played a lot up there. We'll get to that. It's in my notes. <laughs> I've learned to pre-interview, and I try to do it the night before drunk, so I don't really remember the story. So I go, "What was that thing you were telling me?" When no, you, we were drunk. Have, it's, it's an honest way of pre-interviewing. No, you have bullet points. You yeah. Have, you have <laughs> one or two words. But it's an honest conversation because yeah, I was drunk and don't really remember what exactly you said, but I know it's funny. So the second guy that picked me up in that hitchhiking thing was Judge Harold Lee. Yeah. Also God. a character. I don't know what. I heard he's in jail now or something. No, he really? Was, I, yeah, but I, I, I heard that from Kenny. It's, it's not oh, a reliable yeah, source. Kenny. It's not necessarily. Kenny is not. No, but he heard from... I don't know. Last I heard, he was fighting to open a poker room somewhere. Right, he has been doing that. <laughs> so he could very well be in jail. He was arrested, you know, at that Indian well, casino. Who hasn't been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he picked me up, and then we're done shooting. We go to the Copper Queen Hotel here. We're having mm-hmm. drinks on the patio with Judge Harold Lee and Mikey Palmer, who I just met. Oh God, Mike! And. Uh, so we're just making small talk at happy hour cocktails, and uh, I always I said I've always thought about moving here. It's just I've thought about it, but I didn't really intend to. And Mike goes, "Well, if you're going to buy a place here, there's only one person to talk to. That's Margot. Hang on, let me call her." So, so without me being able to backpedal, he just dials you up and puts you on the phone, and then I get your voice. And this I sound like Tom Waits, <laughs> right? I said, I'm just like Tom Waits imitates me. It's unbelievable. And if, for the record, Margot is an actual woman. She's not transgendered. She just has the most fantastic radio voice of a fucking man. <laughs> that's, that's a Paul. I have a Paulet plantation in my throat, which allows me to sound like this. Can you get that? Can you get that as an elective surgery? Well, I've, I've electively surgeried it to have it removed once. But well, p- put it in me. I want that there you voice. Go. Isn't it great? It is. It's and fantastic. I've, they said, you're going to have to do it again. I said, fuck it. I'm not doing it anymore. I am what I am, you know? I, I, w- I wouldn't change that for anything. Uh, so you get on the phone. Well, what price range do you, do you have in mind? <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I'm like, I'm just bullshitting. I, I, so I lowball it. I never even looked at buying a house ever. And you go, the only thing I can think of uh, off the top of my head is 212 Van Dyke. It's over in Warren. And I go, okay. And I get off the phone. And you had I'm, no idea where Warren was. No. Uh, but the next morning I woke up before we went to the airport and I took the, the crew van out driving around till someone knew where Van Dyke was. And I found this place and I took pictures I bought this place without seeing the inside. I had took pictures through the window. Uh, Renee came out and looked at it and said <laughs> it was good. It's so, a mother-in-law apartment. Yeah, yeah. Or the brother-in-law or whatever. Well, at that point, the mother-in-law was still alive, and she said, don't you fucking dare call it a mother. <laughs> She's not living with us. <laughs> don't worry. So, yeah, that's how I was introduced I, I to Margo. I always call them guest accommodations. Yeah, guest house. Sounds yeah, nice. guest house. But yeah, for a guest you don't want staying too long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they stay too long if you have a guest house with a bathroom. <laughs> Margo always has fantastic stories. We first got here, we went to your house for 4th of July for the Coaster Races. Met a lot of people. We even came to a Chamber of Commerce thing that you were, I don't know, it was... It's nine years ago. It seems like a, a different person altogether. But uh, yeah, so yeah, you took us out, and you've always been our one of our favorite people. You're oh, done with you. real estate now. Yep. You're retired. I'm retarded now. Yes. And I'm having great You're difficulty. Seventy five years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope my voice gets lower. <laughs> <laughs> Just You're like my still boobs. A menace. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Margot. 
shit faced at like seven thirty, and then you'd go go to other bars in town and come back, and she's still going three <laughs> hours later. I thought you were on your last legs at happy hour. No, Margo plows through. Back in the uh, you used to play some gnip gnop or you know fag tag up at uh, what was the uh, the bar up above the stock exchange. You play bridge or pinochle or something. Oh, we you... played dice up there. Yeah, yeah. What was it called? We call it Five Alive. No, no. The name of the bar. Oh, the name of the bar. Oh, God. The blue something was it? It was. Oh, this shit. is in Old Bisbee, Damn it, right? Yeah, it's Old. Yeah, it's Bisbee. an Old Bisbee. It's up and on you guys okay would Street. All be fucking wrecked, and then you'd come back hours later, and like they're still going. <laughs> yeah. Like I've yeah. always used people like you as a role model. Like you can still. You oh, can ca- cannabis and tequila, baby. That's that's my that's my motto. We just stopped at Margot's house to pick her up. Uh, she's going through the fridge trying to find snacks for the podcast, saying, first of all, I don't know what a pod is." <laughs> don't worry, it's like a radio show. Oh, okay, that explains it. Thanks for clearing that up. God, she's going through the fridge in her house, going, "No, let, hang on, wait, no, you don't do you don't do marijuana." I, I'm trying to find something that's not. <laughs> marijuana infused <Laced>. infused <laughs> infused with marijuana hang on I think this tepanada is good <laughs> yeah I had one tepanada that's infused with marijuana oil and I didn't want to bring that over here god forbid someone came for a football Sunday and brought a tray of brownies have I already told this on the podcast uh, that was the last time I had marijuana infused brownies were those, oh, I, were I those freaked my out the, no, oh, no, no, this was it. Who brought this? I woke up, 9 a.m. is when football starts here. It's early. Yeah. So I wake up early to start cooking shit, and they're already on the table. So I think, oh, these are legitimate brownies. Well, of course. The other kind of brownies so come later. Yeah. So It was an early morning. Lid. And it, one quarter of the tray is gone. That's, oh, my that's God. Bingo. There should be a different color brownie. Or there should be a, f- a toothpick, a frilly toothpick. Normally, I would assume, but since it was 9 a.m., yeah. I think it's fine. A quarter's missing. Bingo's already hit it. So I ate oh, one. Oh, she's drifting. Why? We didn't know yet. She just thought she She didn't scared. either. I ate half of one. I go, oh, these are kind of shitty brownies. <laughs> Too wet. And uh, then it hit me. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm not good with pot. I get, and I sat in here for football. I couldn't even, my arms were rubber. I couldn't even get a drink to my mouth oh, for about terrible. five hours. That's what straws are for. But that's what, <laughs> then you get like Mikey Palmer and Dunwoody, where you have to be. Oh, Chris you know, Dunwoody? Yeah. I adore him. I love Dunwoody. Isn't but he fabulous? You, yeah, you feel like you have to be a host. And then I just, I, I just, at one point said, listen, explain to anyone who comes in that I'm fucking high and I, yeah. I can't be disturbed. Yeah, we called him Mushroom Chris. Oh, yeah. Because he used to go up and he'd collect mushrooms and sell them. And then the Vietnamese and the Orientals came in and took that all over. Where? Up in the north, northwest for the mushrooms and morels. Oh, and everything I, I grow. thought yeah. Bisbee. I, like, we, we have one Chinese no, no. restaurant and you go in and there's two Chinese. I go, I want to see if there's actual Asian people in this town. I haven't the, seen one. Well, what about three? Three? Yeah, yeah. The new... Yeah, God, anyway, she makes great We're getting food. way too inside Bisbee. Yeah. Never mind. So, yeah, Margo, where do we start? I know I have notes here because you have so many great stories. Let's start with cancer. Let's start with cancer and work our way back to funny. Well, I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, I'm a cancer survivor for three years, and... Um, I owe a lot of that to using cannabis. I feel it's been a, a wonderful help to me. Hang on, it's lung cancer, and you have a lighter in your hands. So yes, go ahead I and do. fire I up a, a cigarette, cigarette too. So <laughs> I'm not firing up a joint, so that's a good thing. <laughs> well, you, you're not. You're 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 a survivor right now. Well, I am, and you know, if I drop dead tomorrow, I've lived a great life. Which we will get to yes. after this message. No, I don't have a message. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors, but we'll get to that. I remember my Uncle Harold, I go, Uncle Harold, um, they, and Uncle Harold will say, who are they? And I go, I don't know. So Uncle Harold will say, well, don't worry about it. And he'd say, do you want to be a doorknob? No, Uncle Harold. I don't want to be a doorknob. You want to be a vegetable? No, Uncle Harold, I don't want to be a vegetable. Then live your life. It was great advice from Uncle Harold. How did he die? Uh, he died at 89 or something. Gunfight? 
<laughs> no, I, I think his, uh, he was shot by his girlfriend's. No. <laughs> He so was, lung cancer, how do you figure out you have it? Because my audience are all uber unhealthy people. And every time you cough at a certain age, you go, is that it? How does it start? Well, I'm I, tired. I started smoking. Um, actually, I used to steal my mother's Lucky Strike cigarettes. I was going to ask for a brand. We're sponsored. This podcast sponsored by Lucky, Lucky Strike. Strike. And she had the little green tins with the lucky strikes. They just looked so cool. And I was raised in citrus orchards, so I would grab the lucky strikes and I'd go out. We had a special little cave under one of the, the grapefruit trees. And we'd go under there and we'd smoke cigarettes. What age? Uh, well, I don't know, 12 or something right. like that. But kid. my God, my mother, yeah, I was, I was a kid then. I was a tall kid, but I was still a kid. <laughs> and that it was just because we weren't supposed to do it. We had to do it. It's like rules are made to be broken. I don't know. It's just something that occurred to me, or it didn't occur to me. I just did Margo, it. you smell like cigarette smoke. Well, the, <laughs> the other kids are smoking. Well, why do you smell like smoke? Because I'm six foot ten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Smoke rises. And I'm not a vegetable. <laughs> I'm not a vegetable. I'm an animal. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of Richard Bird when he was uh, in that accident, and, and he was telling me, you know Richard Bird, the photographer here? He did, no. Okay, he's done photography for all these super blues people and so on. Was it, when, when Margo brought us through her house, she's shown us different pieces of art all over her house, beautiful art. She goes, uh, so-and-so did this, dead. Uh, so and so, they're still alive, but this one, this is a beautiful picture. He's dead. This one died a few years ago. <laughs> well, it's the way it is, you know, it's a way of things, you know. So, anyhow, Bird goes, it was really terrible. He said, for a long time, they thought I was going to be an animal, and he meant a vegetable. He was just so out of it. I fucking love it. <laughs> they thought I was going to be an animal. <laughs> God. So you uh, you started. How did you? Uh, like, what led you to go to a doctor to get diagnosed? Uh, that's a good question. Oh, I know why. No, I don't know why. Coughing I don't up know. chunks. No, no, no. I don't know how they. Oh, I know why. You didn't go to the doctor thinking, "Oh, I might have lung cancer." Let. No, actually, I went to a doctor uh, because I had a growth of my adrenal glands. And that was non-cancerous, but when they were in there... I, wouldn't that be when you were 11? <laughs> yeah, my, my adrenal glands, they went berserk early age. So you, he, had a, you had a growth. I went in, and uh, I said, you got to double-check this. And then he found, they found a spot in my lung. There's a Which little been, black spot on my lung yeah, today. Yeah, due day. And uh, it had been there since I was a kid. Because I had bronchial pneumonia and whooping cough at one time, and I was in one of those... Uh, Back when it was popular. Yeah, exactly. It was very popular then, and I had the to go... Group. I had to go into one of those um, tents, those oxygen tents. That's why, that's why I'm claustrophobic. You hang out in the oxygen... And then the kid next to me was screaming and crying all the time. It was, just, was it like a camping tent? It was a Kaiser. A Kaiser's. Was it like oh. John Travolta as the boy in the little in the, the bubble? Boy in the plastic bubble. Yeah, it was kind of like it was yeah. like a pressurized tent where they had like the the air was there was more percentage of Apparently oxygen. Was it so. like a bouncy castle? <laughs> no, damn it! <laughs> but then they had this kid next to me screaming all the time, "Mama, my mom, my mom, my mom!" Oh God! So I am claustrophobic because of that. So have you gone on the mind tour? Yes, I have. I'm okay with wow. the mind tour. But I'm not okay with um, a bunch of people in a small room. Maybe it's just because I just don't like to be with a bunch of people in a small room. And that's how you survived the Great White Fire, but we'll get to that later. Oh, no, she didn't. That was like, oh, Great White. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so they, this spot is still there. The spot was there, and the guy said, well, we better check it out. And then they 60 been, years later. Yeah, well, they, they just been, diagnosed they, it as kids. They, no, but they've been watching it for quite a few years, and the guy noticed it grew a little millimeter or some goddamn little old thing. 
And they said, well, we better check it out. And they said, yeah, that, this is not a good thing. So they went in and removed on my right side. There's three air pockets or whatever, and they removed two of them, and uh, I'm doing fine. The so lobes, right? Aren't they called lobes? It's like it's, they're, they're like each okay, lung has right, a bunch of sacs. Yeah, the yeah. right the right lung has three sacs. Uh-huh. The left lung only has two. All right. So One's right. always bigger than the other. Well, that's just like my tits. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So anyhow, that's how they did it. And it didn't scare me. It did scare me after the treatment because uh, I was at a horrible hospital. And Where? They, at the Carondelet in uh, Tucson. and The Carondelet uh, and Lucky Strikes bring you the Doug Stanhope podcast today. Sponsored oh, by man, the- those suckers. <laughs> They uh, they went and sent me into a recovery room, and there were still dust bunnies under the bed. There was somebody's bleeding stuff still in the trash can in the bathroom, and I knew this was not a good thing. So, I think we stayed at that place on the road. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that America's exactly. best value in. Oh no, that's uh, it might be, but <laughs> that's when I knew. And then then I got really sick. It wasn't from the operation; it was from the recovery room. Staff infection. Oh, yeah. oh like, honey. Oh yeah. It, that almost did me in. Wow. Yeah. So, and, but I, I'm still here. You're still here. Uh, so we did. Fuck, a, I don't know if those I Catholics and their Carondelet. <laughs> God damn. Well, well, I think the first year we did Celebrity Death Pool, we were sitting around drunk with Alex and Trish, and we we decided to do Bisbee Death Pool. And I don't know if I picked you, but you were definitely picked. And this is years ago. Na 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 na. Then there's Booker. Did you Booker. know Booker? No. Oh, we Booker. could go over all the local dead people that died, but You're this right. is for an international audience. No one here, no one in Bisbee listens to this. You're but, safe. Perfect. Margo, <laughs> just just to set it up here, uh, how long have you lived in Bisbee? Uh, about thirty five years. Wow. I mean, this town has changed a lot in that time, correct? It has, yeah. It she has. was here before the mine closed. Yeah, so. I was here before the mine closed. Which was 75? 72 or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of like Vietnam. It kind of ended, but then it really ended in it's 75. It's still open. I mean, the bi- it's still in business. Oh, I mean, the mine. The... <laughs> Not Vietnam. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're both still. They're, they're out of business. They're still doing shit at the mine, but that's who gives a fuck. Let's get back to you. You were a cook at a dude ranch. Last yeah. night when I saw her at the bar, she's like, you like this dress? I was from my days when I was a cook at a dude ranch. I was a camp cook at a dude ranch, pardon me. <laughs> Up in outside Ennis, Montana, Diamond J Ranch, and it was great. I had a great time up there. I had my big old Appaloosa. Get, it got to go out and shoot guns and stuff. How old are you at this point? Oh, maybe about 48. It was the year of the big Yellowstone fire, whatever that was. So 48, so right before you moved here? Wait. No, no, no. I was 48 years old, not Yeah, but I'm doing 35 minus 75 is 40, so you left here to go there. Well, I got the job. I'm not going to test your memory because no, I know. No, please it's don't. It's, it's false. I remember when I, after I bought this place, we moved out here. And it was like two days before we could get the keys. But we have a, a rental uh, a mover with the mover trying to get home. And they wouldn't give me the keys. So we just broke in. I went, fuck it. And then, <laughs> then we went to the Copper Queen and we f- found you. I brought you a bottle of champagne or something what or a, a bottle nice of guy. wine. I go, I'm Doug Stanhope. I bought that house from you. We had never met face to face just on the phone because I bought this without right. being here. And... uh I go, I'm Doug Stanhope. I, I bought the place from you. And you're like, ah? I go, uh, <laughs> 212 Van Dyke. And you're like, who? <laughs> what? <laughs> was my it, hearing, my was it in 88, the Yellowstone fire? It might have been. I, Jesus. I'm, no, I, look, I got my fucking phone, man. I know, what but do you I'm, think say, I'm doing? No, I'm saying 88. I'm yeah, picturing 19, 1988 as a dude ranch. <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm picturing the 40s when she says I used to be. <laughs> no, I was only I wasn't even 12 in the 40s. <laughs> anyway, so around 1988, we think. Yeah, so, yeah. So, How'd you get this gig? 
What? That gig? Someone heard you on the telephone and went, oh, you're a perfect cook no, for a dude I was, No, uh, I was... Uh, we got a new guy and, coming up. <laughs> I was whiling away my probationary hours for being a part of the Bisbee 13, a uh, drug smuggling... Okay, then we should back up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, automatic rewind to the Bisbee 13. Is this uh, Betty Lindstrom related by any chance? No, that was another deal. All right, because she's been on the podcast and told that story. No, no, I just, uh, I was hanging out and I had a lover of mine who was dealing and I was just a dumb broad. I had no clue. That's, I, you, that's a hard sell. I know. I is. can't imagine a dumb Margo. All right, well. Go ahead. I'm not a dumb Margo, but I... And I'm not a prosecutor, so go ahead. <laughs> and I'm not a prostitute, so we're even. Prosecutor, I said. Oh, pardon I'm me. not a prosecutor, so go ahead. You don't have to Anyhow, sell me with the... I was just a dumb girl. I had no idea this guy was doing what he was doing, so they did a net. They Coke did a grand weed. jury indictment. There was no marijuana ever found, and they did a grand jury indictment on 13 people, and I was known as one of the Bisbee 13. That's kind of cool. And I had no idea, and all these people were like half my age, and they're going, we don't even know her. It was bizarre. Then I'm up in front of Judge Borowick, and he goes, uh, can you speak English? And I said, Your Honor, his wife's name was Margot Borowick at that time. And I said, Your Honor, you and I have been to many parties together, and you know I know how to speak English. Oh! <laughs> That was dumb Margo. Uh, yeah, never. I am a dumb broad. No, you're but not. Come on. For him to ask me, can I speak English? I mean, give me an effing break. I mean, it was absurd. I can speak English and deeper than you, Your Honor. Yes. <laughs> so anyhow. I can do it baritone. <laughs> everybody knew I wasn't involved in this stuff. They, they knew it. So I said, well. I finally said Nola Contendere because it was I had no money, I couldn't fight it. I said Nola Contendere. I'm not going to say I'm guilty. No contest because I figured that was a financial way to get the yeah. hell out of it. So, boom, guilty or whatever the hell it was. So then I had a chance to go down and work in Alamos as a reverse wetback selling real estate down there. So I go to the powers of B and I say, hey, can I go down to Alamos and sell real estate as a reverse flat back? And they, no problem. They let me go. I mean, that's how dangerous that must have been. The whole thing was just totally stupid. So what was your sentence? Go to Alamos? Yeah, I had to go to Alamos. And <laughs> so it's like a Vietnam era thing where you, uh, you can join the army or, or yeah, go to jail? Just, uh, hey, they, you can... A probationer. I don't know what the hell it was, but it was just really awful. So then you get the opportunity to... And I said, can I go to Alamos? I've got to, I have an opportunity to sell real estate down there as a reverse wetback. I didn't tell them that. Yeah. And they said, that's fine. <laughs> so everybody laughs. Oh, there you are, whiling away your probationary hours <laughs> in Alamos, Sonora. <laughs> and I had a great time down there. This is in Mexico? Yes. Yes, Sonora is in Mexico. All right. Well, I don't know Alamos. I didn't know if you meant Los Alamos. Alamos is the northernmost. Um, it's Colo Alamos to the states. Wang zing! <laughs> it's right. the northernmost colonial city in Mexico, and I was selling homes with three foot thick walls when they were invaded by the French and so on, and they would bury their bodies in the walls because they were surrounded. It was such a trip. I just love Alamos. It's gorgeous. It's just a beautiful place. And uh, the people down there are really nice. And it was This really podcast fun. brought to you by whodiedinyourhouse.com. <laughs> That's an actual sponsor of some podcast. Well, I'll tell you what. People would go in there. These are three-foot-thick walls. And they would go in there and start putting in stuff, and they would find bodies literally buried in the walls. They would find gold and silver buried in the walls. I, I shit you, you fuck not. You fuck with me, you're going to be buried six feet up. <laughs> Three feet to the left. <laughs> so, really so let me get this straight. On probation... Yes. You went to a foreign country. I whiled away my probationary hours. <laughs> a different time. <laughs> yeah. 
in Alamo, Sonora. I did indeed. And how did you get from s- selling real estate there to being a cook at a dude ranch? Oh, uh, well, it began in Alamos, actually. Because I had all these baby boys and these kids, they, they were fascinated by my way of cooking. So they'd come over to my house, they'd bring me food and stuff, you know, hey. And they'd never seen a cast iron frying pan. It was, it was amazing. They just didn't know. They had all those little skinny tin pans and stuff. So Dollar store. <laughs> yeah, dollar store in Alamos. I don't think there is one. But anyhow, I just started cooking up stuff, and the Combs family had a big ranch down there, and uh, and I sold real estate with one of the family, and she saw what I could do with pretty much nothing, but I, impromptu, whatever you give me, I could I call it green beret cooking. <laughs> whatever you got, you fix up. And so they were impressed with that. And their camp cookie for the ranch up out of the Diamond J Ranch up outside of Ennis, Montana, called in and she couldn't make it. So Ginger Combs says, hey, you want to come up and cook at the ranch? I said, I've never done it, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. I think I was 48 or something then, years old. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I went up to Montana and... Did my thing. How long did you do that? Till you were off probation? Uh, Once again, crossing state lines, heading to the, I mean, the northernmost state, you know, or one of the most northernmost states in, in the contiguous U.S. On probation. It, it fucking blows my mind. Well, on a drug well, charge during Reagan's 80s. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, obviously they were really concerned about me. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> It was just, they, they got me in a net thinking that... Check her purse before she gets on the plane. Ah, she's fine. What? Yeah, right. She's coming from Mexico oh, God, on a drug charge. Oh, Montana. Jesus, don't even talk to me about, talk to me about checking my purse. <laughs> Jesus Christ, when I was down in San Juan, Puerto Rico, counting cards and shit, my husband and I, and it got really nasty down there weather-wise. We said, oh, we're out of here. And I had a bunch of, um, well, my husband had it in his uh, pipe tobacco thing, and it was Like a pouch. Pot. Like it's loose a tobacco, pot. right? Yes, yeah. it was marijuana. That was tricky, but we got out of it. Oh, How'd man. you get into counting cards? I beg your pardon? How did you get into counting cards? How did I get into counting cards? Oh. Some devious man? <laughs> I had a lover. All my lovers are devious, of course. And... Um, <laughs> They just said, hey, you want to? Did you ever have a lover say, don't talk dirty to me right now? I'm trying to come. <laughs> no, I'm trying to come. And I'm, I, oh, here's a good one. I was with a friend of mine up in Vegas, man. And we're sitting there, and, and he dropped his uh, fork or knife under the table. And he's down there getting the, <laughs> the fork. And he goes, he has this very sought out voice. He goes, let go of my ears. I know what I'm doing. And I'm going, and I'm sitting there like this with my hands up. <laughs> no, it's not me. And every it's like, oh my god, I couldn't believe it. So the next thing we know, we get a big bottle of Piper Heights and champagne delivered to our table. And uh, Malloy goes, we, fine Irishman he was, and he goes, we didn't order that. No, but your neighbors did. They love your sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Let go of my ears. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, okay, counting cards. Okay. So, anyhow. From the best of your recollection. Oh, God. That's I see. I, I recognize that look on your face. Because every day, every cocktail I have, my brain is deleting unused files. <laughs> Don't you wish you could defrag your brain? I would love it if my life flashed before me when I died. I would, everything would be new to me. Like, oh shit, I did that. Like, People tell me stuff all the time and I go, I don't remember doing that, but it sounds like me. Yeah. I'm sure I did it. Then there's stuff I've heard that I said, no effing way I did it, but... I, I get I get stories told back to me that I don't want. If that's the rumor, let that be. 
because yeah, that's well, a great I'm story. Up. I'm giving up. They, I know that's not true, but that's that's yeah, a good let story. It, let so, it yeah. ride, man. Yeah. Let it ride. You know, I'm just truly. Um, I'm trying to figure out how in the world. Well, I can't remember exactly, but anyhow. Next thing you know, you're counting cards now, in Puerto Rico. Next thing Rico. I know is uh, I'm training to count cards, and uh, we went through thousands of decks. That was before Thorpe came out with the book Beat the Dealer. And um, anyhow, I was, uh, was in those days capable of doing it. And we went up to Vegas and uh, started out there, and they told me, uh, you know, with your height, my voice wasn't like it is now, but with All my right. height, it was pretty difficult, you know, to, to disguise to you, disguise myself. So, um, I my mo was being, uh, I wore the, the, I watched all the dancers and you know the tall models and stuff or showgirls. So I dressed up like a showgirl. Oh, the son of a bitch won't says I bring him bad luck, and I was carrying a twenty thousand dollar bankroll. At that time, it would probably be worth about a hundred grand a day. And well, is this so? This is mafia era Vegas. Yes, seventies, mid seventies. Yeah, you can break yeah, your legs. Yes, yes, they do. Yeah, they, they didn't mind, but I had some pretty hairy experiences there. But it was not hairy legs, but it was interesting. And I dress, you know, like a showgirl, a showgirl. and it worked. You know, it was just my mo, my modus operandi. How long did this go on? It only went on for, I think, two years because of my height and, you know, it was so easily... But two I, years, that's a long time. Well, it wasn't all the... This, you know, he took this fifth seat, you know, and it was it was interesting. Man, you could cut down a deck and I could pretty much tell you it was left in. Not today, but in those days I could. It was... Uh, it, was a, well, it was a lot less of everything back then. You could get away with so much, or it seems like... to. Like today, with all the you know high tech surveillance. And oh yeah, they probably had a few you know flunkies, I have lackeys had, out on the floor. I actually have had pit bosses come up to me. Look, lady, I don't want you playing on my shift. If you never need a backer, let me know. <laughs> when I first moved, and to I just act like the dub rod that I am. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> uh, when I, f I first moved to Vegas, I was 19, and there was a guy that I had met that was a, a rain man a type of, not that low functioning, but autistic, like really a dirty guy, creepy, blinks a lot, clammy guy, and he said he was a card counter, and, you know, people you meet, you're, like, hey, you're, you're yeah, full yeah. of shit. He was this weird, nebbishy, yeah, dandruff in his eyebrows kind of... Yeah, old dude. Uh, and we went to a, a place, and I gave him some money, knowing that he's probably full of shit. And he was there for about 10 minutes before someone recognized him and said, Sir, you can't play in this casino. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, they, they fucking... He, was, oh, he, yeah. he wasn't they knew lying him. at all. They knew him. Yeah. They, Art, I still remember his name. They would come up to me and just say, Not on my shift. You know? And actually, I've had pit bosses say, if you ever need a backer, let me know. You, of course, you never cop out. What? I'm, I'm a dumb broad. You know? <laughs> and they'd always want to comp you rooms and so on and so forth to get your name. Oh, no, I have a friend here. You know, you oh, had to that's be... interesting. Oh, yeah, because they want to know who the F yeah. you are. You know? Put a name you to can face. swear. <laughs> she and... just said, who the F you are. This is the woman that when I'm asking directions to her house, because I haven't been there for a while, she's like, you go down to Tombstone, and it's right across from those motherfucking solar panels. It's just <laughs> tirade about the solar panels. Oh, man. They're fucking ugly. I love any woman who, a 75-year-old woman who uses motherfucking in the course of giving directions to her home. <laughs> Is it an adjective or a verb? <laughs> it's all in how you use it, lady. There you go. It is, it is indeed. So and was it, it a brutal ejection from the card counting life um it was gradual and because i just you know they knew me so they popped me from the i had to move pretty quickly from the the green chips to the black chips the hundred dollar chips yeah. and stuff because they knew i wasn't gonna last i just 
just simply because of my height, but I loved it. They'd bar me, and I'd be dressing like a, a showgirl, and I'd come back in, and I'd be wearing biker boots and no makeup and stuff like that. It was so much fun. Yeah, just but me. you're still six feet tall. As yeah, I know, I. But, but, you know, it was really fun to just come in there and do costumes and, like, fuck with them a little bit, you know? It was really neat. I enjoyed it, but I had to, and when I leave a place, I'd... Now, do, do, do they talk internally? Like, do the casinos at that point, this is 80s, 70s? I think it was in the seven, about 75, 76 of De Niro movies yeah, and all casino. that shit. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that, that era. That's what I was... Uh, I can't remember his real name. Ace Rothstein. Uh, I can't remember if that's the real guy or the character, but he's based on a real guy. De Niro's character in Casino. But uh, w- would the casinos talk to each other? Would they like, hey, here's a heads up, this six-foot-tall chick counts I, cards? I, I, well, if they didn't, shame on them. <laughs> but, I mean, would you notice getting busted at different casinos? No, in a, no, like, no. Succession? And I always sit a certain position on the table and blah, blah, blah. But it was, um, it, it, it was really fun. It was such great theater. I think that would be a fantastic way to... I just Live loved it. For a while. Yeah. I, the only thing I couldn't do is not tip. <laughs> All professional gamblers don't tip. And I, oh, that would I, be I, like. I always, uh, I always toked them. I'd always leave a toke. That's Vegas uh, nomenclature right there. What's that? Toke the dealer. Toke yeah, the dealer. You toke yeah. the dealer. What's that mean? Tip. Obviously, tip. Yeah. Tip. But yeah. Uh, Over tip, I would assume. No, no I haven't just... heard the expression toke since I lived there. Never. Yeah, heard. well, that's. Well, obviously, I was there. <laughs> so was, I guess I, there was a time when that could happen because the casino was probably an entity all by itself. Now casinos are owned by what two companies, three companies own all the casinos on the strip. So oh, that's too bad. Now you can't. I mean, you want everything trade. is fucking corporate owned. But back then it was a, like the horseshoe was worried about the horseshoe. Oh, Binion's they, horseshoe! I love that place. <laughs> that was a great joint. Did you, so you lived for two years in Vegas. Well, I went up there during a season and All right. you know, came back and lived in my two room cabin with an outhouse. I didn't know lake. cheaters had a season. <laughs> well Winners uh, do. Cheaters yeah, don't. I'm not, Spring I was training. Never, honey, I don't feel I was ever a cheater. I was a no, card counter. There's a big difference. I said that for the effect of funny. Okay. Well But yeah, no I, I may have cheated on my husband's way, I didn't cheat at cards. That, that that breaks down to the that whole uh, we refu- reserve the re- we reserve the right to refuse service to anybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you count cards, we can throw you out. But if you're black, <laughs> so like, where do you draw the line with that? I, I, I think that's fair play. If I'm smarter than other players, yeah, I'm not I wasn't cheating. cheating. Yeah, I was counting cards. I'm gaming. And that was before I'm playing defense. That was yeah. before Thorpe came out with the book Beat the Dealer. I know you seem to have a hang up about this. Well, he ruined my game because <laughs> they realized that you could count cards and beat the dealer. So you still have a grudge against this. Why don't you write a fucking book, lady? No. Oh, You're too dumb. I'm too <laughs> dumb. I'm just a dumb broad man. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was really funny because they all of a sudden they realized. I'm one of the reasons they went to four decks. That's a nice claim to fame. It is. You should have your picture up somewhere in the yeah, Cheaters Hall is. of Fame. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> God, well, we'll the Counters any- Hall of Fame. Please. Well, it, it, either way, four decks lets me lose for longer without having to sit through a shuffle. I'll tell you what, trying to count through four decks, you have to you have to reshuffle your friggin' brain, man. It's just That's where I think the only good time to do methamphetamine, that would be one of those times. I it's, prefer uh, cocaine. Hyper aware. I'm hyper aware. I can see through your soul. I can, I can see I through your bullet cocaine. Well, yes, either way. Remember Pink Flag. No, I I was never on any drug, I was never a connoisseur. Like, when acid came out, I was always at the end stage of the drug. Like, I did blotter acid. That was pretty much all there was to choose from. 
I I came up in a generation after the liquid this and the fucking sugar cube that. It was all. <laughs> I never did that much of it, but. But pink flake cocaine, like I get what I've never heard of that. Cocaine Peruvian, is just Peruvian flake, and it was pink and it was just unbelievable. I've never been in any situation where I could pick a brand <laughs> when it came to cocaine. Like, well, when you saw cocaine, it, it was pink flake. Do you have any cocaine whatsoever? <laughs> and is there any more? Those are the two kinds <laughs> I got. There was some and more or none. You're not really a discriminating consumer. I've only, I, a, a few times in my life have I had cocaine that really actually numbed your face or you rubbed it on your gums and it numbed your gums. Never, like, you know, and I'm That's fucking really, old by yeah. my audience's standards. Yeah. In 47 years, in the, you know, 27 of those that I've fucked with drugs, no, nah, three times maybe, the numb your gums shit. That's not... I don't think that's cocaine. Well, what how, do I know? What do you? Uh, what I'm do I know? Dumb broad. I'm just a dumb broad. Hey, I'm just a dumb broad. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you did blow? The blow here is horrible. I, I don't. I just say no. I just say no. I don't care for pink snot. <laughs> oh, you can still get the pink flake. You just choose not to. Jesus. No, I'm talking. No. Pink snot. That's Pink the after snot. effect. That's the after effect. Oh, that's the bloody, shitty, the bloody that's, snot. That's oh, shitty yeah. coke. I forget it. Yeah. It's just. Uh, Good cocaine makes you want more immediately, but this cocaine just makes you want actual cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just snorted all that and there's nothing. Oh, it's just a waste of nostril energy. <laughs> I still like the ritual, though. Uh, I like the chop, 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 chop. Yeah, chop, chop, yeah, rolling up nine, a nine, 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 dollar nine. bill. Chop, 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 <laughs> nine, nine, nine. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think we're going to move backwards now. Because, yeah, it, it must be backwards because there was some kind of civil rights. Hey, I'll make you a drink. That's a great thing about this is we can pause. Oh, God. Good. Yeah, if you have to piss at any time. Well, I'll let you know. Before I, put, I didn't bring my new pen, so. TheShadyDell.com. That is where you stay. If you come to Bisbee and you're staying at the Shady Dell and I'm in town, I will have a beer with you. I won't hang out that long. We're not going to be good friends. I don't want you to fucking tell me you're going to kill yourself. But if you're staying at the ShadyDell.com, vintage trailer park with all 50s, 60s trailers, that we live a mile away from, and we look for reasons to go stay there. Come to theshadydell.com. Sponsored by... I might even come in and uh, clean your toilet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Margo Wallenberg, will you be in Vegas for the uh, September 27th Doug Stanhope extravaganza? I'm certainly looking forward to it, dear. It will be Saturday night show, Sunday football in the sports book all day. And oh. all the all the pleasures the plaza. Can I bet? You would remember it as the Union Plaza. They've gotten rid of the Union, but now it's still the Plaza downtown Las Vegas. It's uh one of the uh old school, old filthy Vegas. Might even be mob run still, like some guy that's uh, in the witness protection program, and they go, hey, you know the last place they'd ever expect to find the mob? Vegas, because that was when Vegas was great. So the plaza is like that. It's Fremont Street. Really? I remember uh, the Four Kings down there. Uh, I don't know if the Four Kings Kings are still there. Four Queens. Four Queens. Four Queens. It actually still is there. Is it? Uh, Yeah. I think that's like a boutique hotel now. Really? There's the Golden Gate. Uh, I actually made the most money I ever made in a play was at the Four Queens. Well, now you can go back and lose it and break even and apologize. Repent for all your cheating. I never cheated. That's not what the mob says on their Facebook page. Mm. 
<laughs> we should start a mafia Facebook page. A mafia Facebook <laughs> page. I love it. So uh, wrap up the commercial. You, do, don't oh, you have a oh, link yeah. on September 27th. Come to Vegas, and uh, it'll be the only time Count I ever hang out queens. with you for uh, an extended amount of time. Hey, people email you like, hey, uh, I see you're playing in Austin. If we could uh, just chat about some stuff. I have some ideas I'm thinking about getting into comedy. I can't fucking chat with you in Austin, Texas. I have fucking 800 people there and 700 of them are friends of mine <laughs> that I have to hang out with. So yeah, we're not going to grab a quiet drink. If you want to fucking bug me, I'll be in Vegas. The only time to ever bother me for the rest of my life is if you come to Vegas, Saturday show, and then you can annoy me all day Sunday while we watch football, and I'll be the guy going, wait, wait, ooh, oh, fuck, god damn it, I have 700 bucks on this game. One show. One show. Sounds One show. familiar. Saturday night. So, yeah, get a room for two nights. It's downtown Vegas. I found, like, I was searching for that I weekend. love downtown Vegas. I, it's absolutely I fantastic it. still. It's, I'm seriously, It's I the closest love. you can get to Reno without having to go all the way <laughs> yeah. to Reno. Exactly. There are uh, links on DougStanhope.com on your update, which, by the way, you updated finally. So go there, and there's a link to the plaza for hotel rooms as well as for tickets. All right. Yeah, uh, and here's an insider's tip. Go to Expedia, put in the address of the plaza, 1 South Main Street, and search hotels uh, by distance. And you'll see right across the street, maybe they're half the price. I'm not saying the plaza doesn't have the best prices. I'm saying across Check the street. Check that out. Where you don't even, not, not even a big street might be half the if price. If you want to spend... And- Nine dollars yeah. instead of eleven. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cheap as shit. Are now. you serious? There's rooms up there for that. We found oh, nine dollar uh, rooms. We, yeah, we, you, we. You guys are kidding. In the summer, we we, we came through. There were, uh, three weeks ago, we were in yeah. Vegas, and there were nine dollar rooms, and we we decided to go up a little bit. It wasn't the uh, Motel Six. We got a suite at the Plaza for seventy nine dollars when we were coming through three weeks ago. A suite, two room suite. Turns out Doug didn't need it. <laughs> he spent most you're of your time. so bad. I was, yeah, anyway. Triple G, you're bad. Triple G, that's what, uh, that's what uh, Margo has nicknamed Greg Chaley, Triple G. Ask for the Triple G discount when you go to DougStanhope.com and there order you go. merchandise. That's and, it, man, and, Triple G discount. Yeah, you know, Triple G I'm discount. I'm all for it, man. There's no such thing. But anyway, back to Margo. Oh, that's perfect. There's no such thing as Margo either. Check, check. This is the Doug Stanhope Podcast. With our guest tonight, Margot Wallenberg. She didn't hear it. Look, I, I have my hearing aids in. No, 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 you have to. This is Doug Stanhope. And our guest tonight is Margot Wallenberg. <laughs> I want you to talk with me. I'm, I'm going to talk, talk. Now you talk. I'm going to talk. Now you going to talk. All right. <laughs> just seeing how close to your voice that was. I was just checking that. All right. We've <laughs> had poured cocktails, and now we're back. Oh, God. And that break, yeah, hopefully you drop in some... Uh, Advertisements. Okay, I want a little like grapefruit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's. Oh, a, yeah. I don't think it's really grapefruit juice is the problem. What? It's it's whatever they soak oh, the shit in. Oh, now you tell me. Well, it's grapefruit flavored, so it's not grapefruit cla- flavored. Flavored. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to you. Last night you were telling me, and I couldn't understand it. I used to do something, and it, it, it bled into civil rights, and then you're fucking okay. doing a song and dance. Uh, some redneck's house in Alabama. I don't know. I don't know either, but um, I had to leave uh, San Francisco. Who gets thrown out of San Francisco? <laughs> yeah, I threw myself out of San Francisco. I had to leave, and I joined... a. Uh, a company called Empire Producing Company. And I traveled around through the United States of America and uh, 
did these hometown shows, and I literally traveled by public transportation. That, hometown shows, is that was what I couldn't wrap my head around. What does well, that mean? Okay. Uh, uh, the fucking okay, dog. The Hang on, please hold. Chaley has to go. Okay. We beat the dog so badly that he's had three different appearances on Sarah McLaughlin commercials of beaten dogs. I'm oh, just kidding. God. I'm kidding. But I, it was... Uh, where am I going here? Oh, no. Okay. I had to, I had to get the fuck out of town. You had so, to get the fuck out. You can, why are you whispering off mic? Oh, okay. You're doing a Roseanne bar on us. Roseanne <laughs> bar, we just drank with her in Hawaii. She oh, really? had half a tequila and went just, she was shitty drunk. It was fantastic. Half a tequila? Half a tequila. Well, you don't have to whisper off my Have a tequila. Have a tequila. Have a tequila. Rump, bump, 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 bump. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy I'm here. I mean, this is delightful. <laughs> we were just talking about you were joined, you got thrown out of San Francisco, so you joined. Oh, with this the Empire Producing Company. And that was doing during, home events. What was it called? Uh, it was called Empire Producing Company, and I traveled around the U.S. and uh, I put on a home. Uh, um, wasn't home shows, but uh, shows to to sell houses. No, it was uh, to help, like the Rotary or the. Whatever, the Elks or whatever. All right. You know, a fundraiser thing. Okay. So I would go in and I would uh, stay with the, the town's widow, which is just wonderful. And, of course, they told me everything about the town because I'm out of town, so I got all the inside story because I'm leaving in a, you know, a couple <laughs> weeks. Yeah. And I would come in, I'd get, gather these kids together, and I'd put on these hometown shows and uh, taught kids to do, you know, high kicks and all that stuff. And back in those days, my 38-inch inseam enunciation. <laughs> I feel like we're doing drunk history. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was in a little town and called Maynard, Texas, just south of Austin. All right. And I'm staying in this two-story old ranch house that, you know, frame sucker. And this dear lady said, Margo, go shut the windows. And I go, and she said, the locusts are coming. So I ran upstairs. So she's, I got a crutch and stuff. So I run upstairs, close all the windows. We run down to the first floor, and we sat there on the first floor. We're still looking down onto her yard, and this horde of locusts or whatever, herd or pond or whatever of <laughs> locusts turn up. They come in. They fly into the goddamn yard. They eat everything. They eat everything. And as the locusts are falling, all the chickens in the yard are eating the locusts, and they're falling down. It was a, one of the most... Uh, impressive things in my life because it was everybody overdoing it, you know. Everybody. <laughs> and then the locust said to Margo, "Don't hold my ears, honey. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> they ate everything. <laughs> Let go of my ears. I know what I'm doing." <laughs> it was a trip, man. That lady was so grand. She was just such a wonderful person. Was there some civil rights angles slant on this story last night? We oh, yeah, yeah, oh, line. yeah, because I was doing that during the civil rights, you know, tripping and drew, and I told you about the guy when he came in. No, that's what I'm getting to. I don't remember. I know oh, you good. told well, me something. Oh, good, well, maybe I remember. Well, let me see if I remember. Okay, <laughs> I'm coming in from San Francisco. I read when I'm traveling. I'm just an avid reader. I love the written word. I like the spoken word, too, but... Not necessarily the Bible, but anyhow. That's not you spoken. pointed at me. I thought I, I thought I was getting a slam. I like the spoken word, but not your stuff. So no, much. no, 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 no. <laughs> so I walk into this waiting room in New Orleans, and uh, this guy comes up and he puts his face within about twelve inches from my face, 
And he's got a W.C. Fields nose. <laughs> and he has spittle. And he's in my face. And he asks me, are you a nigra? I go, no, why? First of all, you're very, very white. Why would he <laughs> yeah. say that? Well, I, well it all confused right. me right, right off the bat. <laughs> well, no, why? He said, you're in the nigra waiting room. And the guy had to I, I picture this as... N I G G R E. No, N I G R A. What do you call that? N I G R A. That's the way he's pronounced it. Nigra. Yeah. Okay. But still, I picture that little apostrophe on top of the A. Go ahead. Anyhow, I'm going, no, I'm not. You appreciate the written I, word. No, I actually, it. actually, I didn't say I don't think so. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This I is before you did the DNA testing to figure out you're actually. Uh, not a nigger. Octoroon? No, no. What's a uh, uh, Kosovo or <laughs> Croatian? Croatian. I don't know. Maybe these niggers do. Croatian Scott. Yeah. There's no Scottish DNA. I mean, Jesus <laughs> go, go Christ. <laughs> so anyhow, I realized at that point that everybody that I've been sitting there, I'm avidly reading my book. I'm not checking out my neighbors. They had all got up and moved away from me because they thought I was a shit disturber. All I was doing was reading my fucking book and trying to change buses. To the whites only? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I didn't know. They had white. I didn't. They thought you were an agitator. Like yeah, you were they trying did. to start they, some shit. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. you're in the, uh, in the well, yeah. you, you aren't in the whites waiting room. A 513 white broad. In the Negra waiting room. And when he asked me, Negra, I said, I don't know why. And he goes, you're in the Negra waiting room. And I realized at that point that when I sat down, in, they'd all, the Negras <laughs> had moved away from me because I thought I was a shit disturber. I was just trying to read my fucking book. I'm just a dumb girl. I'm just a dumb broad, man. <laughs> I just, I was naive. i Maybe not. Colored? Either. I wore a pink skirt. I, a, I should sit over here. God. It was amazing. It was just. But didn't you end up at someone's house? Was that well, after this whole Negra thing? I end up at a lot of people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hoard around in your day. Oh, I was hoarded. <laughs> I was hoarded. <laughs> Fucking classic. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> Man, I I loved it. I mean, I went one time. I got into a bus. As I say, when I was working for Empire Producing Company and doing all this, Empire travel. Producing Company. I I have a fraud telemarketing background, and that's one of those vague names that screams red flag. Empire Producing, <laughs> International Productions. That. that yeah, uh, so American amb- distributed. So ambiguous, but sounds huge. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like the kind of place you would, you, you know, those scams. I would love to meet anyone who did this fucking scam. Uh, now that I think of it, is where you travel around in a van, town to town, knocking on doors, uh, selling magazine subscriptions or whatever. They will take like hordes of kids. There was always an ad when I was at oh. that age, like nineteen or whatever where you could travel the world and do this, and they just put a bunch of fucking kids who are yeah. ready to just put all chips. Travel the it's world. Like, yeah, it's like the army without the contract. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, you're in a van of 12 people, and you have to go out and bang on doors and sell magazines, and you, you're living like four to a motel room or six to a uh. motel room. It's this wicked scam that I've never heard anything like I've never seen movies about. I've seen some movies yeah, like the fraud telemarketing I did. Wow. But the, and you're, you're, you're kind of stuck. You owe your soul to the company store kind of thing. You never have the money to leave the. I tr- owe my soul to the company store. Boom, boom, boom. boom, 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 boom I sing the how, fabulous how can, give off. How, how, can, how, how can I think that I can do the fucking bass to you? I can turn you up, but. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, if you've ever done that scam, or I was trying to find old people from the fraud telemarketing days in Vegas from the late 80s, early 90s that I did. They had fraud telemarketing telemarketing scams in Vegas? 
it was the second biggest industry when I moved to Vegas. Really? Next to gaming was fraud telemarketing for a, a, a small few year period, five years maybe. Boiler uh, rooms, they call them. Yeah. yeah. They call it them was what? Boiler rooms. Advertising specials. Boiler rooms. Ad specs. Uh, and you, you're, you're, the basic pitch is you've won one of these four awards. All you have to do is oh, buy three scam. or $400 worth of pens. <laughs> and send us $500. Toner was the big scam when I moved to Vegas, at, uh, to L.A. when I was 18. Called for Toto. A, Toner for copying machines. It's a whole different scam. Really? I'm teasing this. I'm teasing this because I want to... Anyone call the burner phone. Hey, I remembered. Uh, 520-366-1078. That's my phone number. If you ever worked in fucking boiler room telemarketing. I'm not talking, oh, yeah... yeah, you, really? If you saw, if you were, that a, did exist. If you were in toner or ad specs in L.A. or Vegas, I want to fucking talk to you. Or solar. I did when I. That's the only job I've been fired from. Was uh, we were trying to sell uh, solar solar heating. And you we guys had, are we had serious. Scams. No, it was a total scam. It was because we would lie to them straight out that there were tax savings that you're just not taking advantage of. And this was full Where is your conscience? That's, that's Triple G scam. Greg, this, where is your conscience? This, this, was, this was like going... This is, this, this is specific scams I'm talking about. A- everything's a scam on some level. I'm talking toner or uh, ad specs in Vegas. What, the you people mean that fucking like, know what I'm talking right, about will right. know. Well, what is Tom like? Tom Kanopka. If you can find Tom <laughs> Kanopka from American Distributing in fucking 1989, he was the funniest guy in the world. It didn't we were have the best comedy with... team before I ever did comedy. Go ahead. Sorry. That was for the listeners. Okay. What, what got you into comedy? Uh, I always, I think, I don't remember my youth at all. Uh, but I, I, I remember writing down ideas for jokes long before I ever did comedy. Uh, so I guess I always thought about it. But then when it became so big in the late 80s, there were open mic nights everywhere. And I went, oh, I could actually do this. There's a lot of... So do you think uh, you're... These, everyone uh, that's okay, listening just knows asking, my story. Doug. Well, the, well I don't know your story so much. Well, we, okay, we have yeah. about 10 minutes, and then we... Okay, good. We okay, have 10 never... minutes of Margo. I want the fucking world to know you, because I love you. Nah, well. Our first idea with Margo, Silent Sewer, if you're listening, is a fan that sent me her book of erotica, which, first of all, erotica is so dated. I, like, I, I'm embarrassed to remember jerking off to Penthouse Forum. Because that was before pornography was readily available, and you'd read stories, and then I sucked his. And you're like fast forwarding. Wait, where does she suck his dick in this? Because I got to jerk <laughs> off. I'm 13. <laughs> so she's still writing erotica, which is so embarrassing anyway. And I remember one of her stories started with my. My mother died and my father didn't want me anymore. <laughs> Going, really? Oh, that's this disgusting. is erotica? That, that is like depressing. <laughs> that's how you start. That's your that's opening. That's fucking depressing. <laughs> and besides that. It was that, the best of times. It was the worst of times. and there's cocks. Time. And cocks are far better than dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so my first idea to try to entrap Margot to get over here was just to read like lines of erotica. And then he cupped my womanly breast. <laughs> when I, one of the few times I've ever performed in this town, because I practice the don't shit where you eat rule, uh, I did a, an impression of Margot Wallenberg doing phone sex. Oh, that was What scary. are you wearing? <laughs> oh, God. I came uh, in like two minutes after you did the performance. Everybody's just fucking falling down. <laughs> what are you wearing? Uh, what are you... Hi, this is Margo. What are you wearing? Um, one, one of those protective suits from when a dog attacks you? I, 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 <laughs> something to that effect. Oh, something. Like There's that. ice in there, Margo. Oh, I'm I put certainly happy to hear that. Oh, you're getting down to my mouth. Oh, oh. She's about right. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking... Margo's hitting it. Half a bottle of Hornitos in 50 minutes. <laughs> What's a woman to do? <laughs> You're just a dumb girl. I'm just a dumb rod. Honey. For those at home, that uh, dumb girl is with the uh, knuckle in the cheek movement. 
with a twist. Okay, now you're caught and up. It's a orange twist. Cheers to you. All right, Cheers one to more you. quick. I think you need an adult beverage. I, I'm, I'm no, it's it's looking pretty. Uh, I'm gonna get dismal. it. Don't you will never I'm see worried, me without a I drink. I am worried sick I'm about good, you. What I, I I have an internal thing. I'm getting you started on a story, and then I will make a drink while you talk. And the story, again, we wrote these down flashbang last night at the bar, but you were talking to something about uh, Monterey and the mafia that was trying oh, to get okay, the Beatles. Okay, okay. I used to handle the transportation of Monterey Jazz Festival. And I worked with a gentleman I called- can see you as a bus driver. Oh, yeah. Sit out and back, Beatles, with your mop hair. You'd be like a runner, right? You'd 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 get things for them, or you'd pick them up. Is that what you're doing? No, no, I no? just uh, I just handled transportation for the jazz festival. It was pretty trippy. I call up um, Dizzy Gillespie. Hey, I'm Margo with the Monterey Jazz Festival, and uh, we need to name. And I had all the inside. Message numbers for all these guys. I need the names of your band. And Dizzy's going, you hear a party going back. You got to be shitting me, baby. I said, no, Dizzy. I, I need the name of your band members. And how many, there was always, when they traveled, they had a half fair basis because they didn't put them in the hole. Hold, hole, whatever. H-O-L something, D or E. And, uh. You gotta be shitting me, baby. I said, no, I really need to know. I mean, I don't know how they do it today when you can't switch names or anything. I mean, my God. It was insane. So I had all the indoor f- phone numbers for everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. So get to the mafia part. Okay. Well, I worked for Jimmy Lyons, who used to do a lot of notations on. I don't, you people are too young to remember it, but they used to They'll LP, Google it, that's the LP great thing. Is, LPs. Long playing. Yeah, you know, a big, record. fat fucking records. And they, they weren't fat, they were just large and slim. And uh, anyhow, Jimmy said, Margo, I want you to help me, blah, blah, blah. So Jimmy Lyons brought in the Beatles for the Mafia. The first time the Beatles came over actually was, now you can check it out, but there was a mafia group that had joined up in uh, San Jose or somewhere like that. And I'm all into blues and jazz. Jimmy Lyons comes back, he's here, Margo. And he gave gave me these things with strips of uh, the Beatles slept here and there were sheets they slept on. I thought, oh, those fucking asshole mop heads. You know, they, I I just didn't think that they weren't my kind of music. And I threw them away. I could have retired like 15 years ago if I'd kept them. (laughs) But you wouldn't be here with us. That's right. I would have been retired. I'd probably been in Monterey or... What? I might have been in Bisbee. I love Bisbee. Were you married when I got here? Like, oh. Nine years ago. Now I don't think so. All right. If I was, it was. I'm not coming on to you. I'm just asking. Are oh, you, are damn, you I'm heartbroken. Dude? No, I don't think so. I had two husbands. The first one was a Billy Mitchell bomber pilot in World War II, born in Poland. And... Um, that was that was the first one. He was one of those. Both of my husbands had IQs over 140, 142, 148, or something like that. I do like intelligent men, but boy, they're a motherfucker to live with. <laughs> but I learned a lot from them, you know. What are you? Are you just uh, single now? Absolutely. So I can have my uh, callers uh, you can have your find you on uh, uh, Facebook and uh, oh yeah, sure. Pitch here, woo at you? No. Can they pitch what, woo at the no, Margo? Let me tell you what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm not really looking for anything, but I would love to have a gentleman friend who can pay his own way. Always a bonus. And is capable of original thought. 
That's Tough the to tricky find. part. That's the tricky part. And appreciate me. Oh, you, you raised your cocktail like you appreciate me. I know what you're saying. You raised your cocktail and to looked at it self. when you said, I appreciate, don't fuck with my drinking. No, actually, just just accept me for who I am. And we that's do. pretty tricky, you know. I'm not an easy woman to be around. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you this far. How about we have a secret relationship where we uh, see each other a few times a year. We don't fuck or kiss. You come over here. We have cocktails and cigarettes. And no one ever knows it's a real relationship. Seems like just a vague uh, uh, acquaintance I'm saying we're having the same relationship that we have right now, but it's under the covers I'll, because I, I we're prefer secretly out, we're, outward. We see each other at Safeway. I, we give a wink, oh, so oh, nobody a little knows. Sly little <laughs> slide of the eye. We sleep in separate beds in separate parts of town. I Sounds fall in like love at least know. three times a day. It might be someone on TV. It might be someone on Facebook. I fall in love a lot. Let me tell you, my age, oh, I'm my always God. on my. I am always amazed the sex occasionally rears its ugly head. Ugh, it's ooh, horrific. Ooh, 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 God, and I go, oh, I still have it in me. Or, you know, <laughs> I still have those. Oh, they still have me. it in me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping. No, <laughs> but it's really funny because. Um, no, it's not funny at all. It's as drastic as those horrific images you see of Palestine. That's what sex with people our age is like. No, it's, hey, you're not my age. What's this we shit? Well, it starts at my age. It ends with your age. You're at the it age. End, you're at the age ends. that she was a cook at a dude ranch. <laughs> She's my come age, a long it's way. a bullet hole in the chest. At your age, it's oh, and then the, it's a kid with his fucking hands cut off. Either way, it's oh no, it's not pretty. Life is beautiful. Life is. Sex gets ugly after a while. I've never noticed that. <laughs> you were always faced the other way. <laughs> well, with a muzzle. If wishes, Don't talk if wishes were dinner. horses, then beggars would ride, darling. That was phone sex. Right? That's a ringtone. <laughs> Do it one more time. If wishes were horses, then beggars would ride. Shaka spere. That's Shakespeare to you guys who speak English. <laughs> Throw a motherfucker in at the end of that. <laughs> How about a mammy jammer instead? A mammy jammer? I think that's a podcast. Uh, do we have anyone to thank? Hey, wait, no, we always let a, when we have a guest. You get to uh, be sponsored by anything you like. We don't have, no one actually sponsors us, but we always say we're sponsored by things that we I like. am sponsored by the Bisbee Blues Festival. When does that come to town? It's August. Uh, soon. soon. <laughs> hey, look for that soon. The soon. Bisbee Blues Festival. I think oh, I'm out is. of town. It's coming in. Um, it's it's says- August. I Look it up. It. Google it. Kids, all they do is fucking Google. They pause this, they Google it. You know it. what fucking upsets me the most? What? Is that kids don't even communicate directly. They don't even look at people. They all... Staring at be, their phones. They're, yeah. I mean... That's because there's someone they'd rather be talking to than whoever they're stuck with next to them. I think they're just stuck with their fucking phones. I can argue either side of this, which way you want to go. I can argue strong and hard. Uh, really? Uh, either I side. Find it, I, find it, I find it wicked annoying till I got one of these dumb phones, and you're like, why would I try to make up conversation with this asshole next to me at an airport bar when I can talk to someone I actually like and never talk to anymore? I, I really, I really like to look at people in their faces and discuss things with them. I don't even like that. I like that. Generally, I'd rather talk to the asshole at the bar just to look at his face because I don't like to. Anyway, okay. I, I, here's here. I want to make up a bumper sticker called 
If all men are assholes, does that make all women assets? It's a t- you can't say that on our program. Well, it's a it's program too late. for kids and Christians. Well, I want to make up a bumper sticker that says, I break for yard sales except on Cochise Row. That's oh, a local that's reference. Good. That's good. I love local it. reference. Zing. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Cochise Row. <laughs> hey, I got a fucking laugh here, you at home, you <laughs> listener on your fucking podcast at home. I just got a big laugh from Margo, and that means more to me than fucking you will ever mean to me. And uh, thanks for tuning into our podcast. If you have uh, any, I'm serious, anyone who ever did toner in Vegas, oh, no, in LA or ad specs, boiler room telemarketing back in those days. Oh. And there's our chorus of barking dogs. That means the javelinas are out, and that's the end of the... It's a chihuahua. It's an attack chihuahua. I I trained attack chihuahua, I could tell. All right. I was going to have... Next time we we have Margo, we're going to have her read uh, erotica from Silent Sewer. (laughs) And that's sewer as in the French spelling of sister, not the sewer... That erotica is so full of beans. <laughs> We're gonna make that into a ringtone. All right, thanks, guys. Oh God! All right, that was a podcast. I had so much fun fucking counting cards, man. I'm telling you what, they want to take me to fucking back rooms. It was scary shit. I can't. Was that the not. best time that you had? Like. If you look over your life, like all the shit you've done, and we haven't got to a, a, a millimeter of it. If you look at the one era of your life, era, I really, era, I error. Really, I really enjoyed being a con artist in Vegas. I, I, I always to this day, I said the only true art is con art. <laughs> yeah, That's, it's, it's just amazing to me. I had I had uh, this turned off right. Yep. Okay. As far as I you had, know, <laughs> I had this lover who thought I was a dumb broad, and he said, "Oh, I always oh, thought that you were a hustler up in Vegas because I threw a good light." I, you asshole. I mean, I have just enjoyed my life. I have lived my life, and I. Never existed in my life. I lived my life. It's so, it's so precious that you need to live your life. Don't exist. You know, you're gonna be a fucking blot. <laughs> Uncle Harold. Uncle right. Harold. Uncle Harold. You See, were counting I mean, cards. At an age, like you're going back 30 years. Oh, yeah. You're counting cards. And I'm a year away from that age where I'm existing my life. I just like sit on the couch and I'm like, oh, I'm too fucking tired to do anything. Uh, That sounds good, but can you smoke there? (laughs) Can you drink there? Instead of me going there, can you just come here? There is a huge difference in those days where you oh. could smoke and drink everywhere. That's why I love Mad Men if you go back that oh, far. God. I, oh god. It's a terrible show. It's really a fucking soap opera, but when you stage it with that like smoking indoors the Pan, and, Pan Am, all that. Yes. I fucking oh, Pan Am I I wanted to be a stewardess, but I was too fucking tall. The height limits were five foot eight. I'm 5'13". I mean, I was a fucking loser. See, you take credit for the uh, four-deck shoot at at a blackjack table. You could have taken credit for the six-foot airplane. (laughs) (laughs) If you put all those skills that you put towards counting cards. So I ended up working for Western Airlines. Western? Western. 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 The only way to fly. Remember? No, it was before. Please hold Okay, please hold. Just keep her talking. You're not. You're no, not keep, you keep talking. We're, we're not recording. He's gonna anything. take a leak. I get it, but you always talking to the microphone. I suspect. Uh, Western what? Airlines. Keep her talking. That was the only way to fly. 
You were a stewardess on Western Airlines for how long? No, I couldn't be because I was too tall. I thought you, you said you actually became a stewardess. No, I could not become a stewardess because I was 5'13". And the limo was 5'8". You know, I was just way over the limit. A tad. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. But it helped me get a sense of humor. I either had to have a sense of humor or just kick the shit out of everybody. You know? There you go. <laughs> I remember I used to... Look at the... Oh. oh. The glass. Oh, my God. Oh, get out of here. Oh, shit. <laughs> I am so happy. Cheers. Thank you, darling. This is so sweet of you. I have Pan Am Tie Tacks. I have all, all sorts of vintage airline shit. I love it. Wow. Doug came back in with a, uh, a, a, a rocks glass with a Pan Am logo on it and gave it to Margo. So, uh, transferred the drink and gave her her drink in a Pan Am yes. glass. Sorry, you were drinking out of Delta earlier. <laughs> what is, oh, my God, that's disgusting. <laughs> well, it's, it's the, the best. You know, back in the day when I was doing all that travel stuff, every I knew all the women in the reservations – all that. It was, you know, late 50s. It was a different scene then. It really was. I, yeah, no, it's... I, I... One one time I had some clients that came in the travel agency in Monterey, and they're literally... I'll never forget them. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Henry J. Crapashits. I thought, I can't fucking make this up, man. <laughs> it was just like, oh, my God. And they're going, look, Margo, nobody believes we're real. We are, and that's our name. And <laughs> Listen, don't make fun of my name. I won't make fun of your voice, all right? Can we get through this my transaction? My like that then. <laughs> when did your voice change? When sorry, I got the sorry Paula, we're not interviewing a 12-year-old I, boy. The, I, <laughs> when I got the Paula Plantation. In my Polyp throat. plantation is really what it's called? Well, I call it that. It's a polyp plantation in my fucking throat. Uh, it, it, she's got a, uh, a bunch of polyps on her uh, well, voice box, right? Yeah. 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 But anyhow, I call up and I call up my friends. Because I knew her back, back in the day, the late 50s, you knew everybody in the reservations and stuff. And they go, Margo. I said, I'm not shitting you. Their name is Aunt, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Henry J. Crapashits. Henry J. Crapashits, with a K, I'm assuming. I, I, yeah, it was just like, and a Z on the end. I assumed that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And I remember when my friends had the, the gay bars up in, in the, San Francisco, and they say, back in the day when they would raid the gay bars, and they call me up and say, Margo, bring all your girlfriends here. Well, just whatever you want, because they needed some broads there, right? And I turn up, and they would just fucking bring us goddamn great bottles of champagne, and it was just, what a great trip. That's uh, actually uh, the gay man's muscle would be lesbians. Because no one, no one hates lesbians. I mean, the, the powers that be. If you're oh, let me place, tell you right now, I just like lesbians who wear uh, khakis and those khaki shirts with the collars on them and the butch haircuts. I, I don't find them attractive. <laughs> You've gone too far on this, Margo. You'll never be mayor of this town. <laughs> you know how many times they've asked me to run for public? I said, Are you fucking kidding me, man. My old man's MIT main maritime ship's officer. I want to be at the dock when he turns up with my hand on his crotch and my hand on his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> All right, we we keep pretending to end this. 
My first husband was a Billy Mitchell bomber pilot, World War II. He was what? Enunciate now. A Billy Mitchell bomber pilot. What's a Billy pilot. M- Mitchell? Billy Mitchell bomber pilot. His in the name was Billy Mitchell. It's a bomber named after Billy Mitchell. Who is Billy Mitchell? I don't know the guy they named the bomber after. Oh, okay. Yeah. He told me he was a fascinating man, another fucking genius. I, I don't know why I was so attracted to geniuses. <laughs> They're really hard to live with. He told me about, he flew over Pawesti. Yeah. He flew over Pawesti in World War II, and he said they pulled up this map in the morning, and they pull up this map, and they say, here's it going. Here's where you are going, enunciate. And this one guy in the back said, I'm not going. They flew over Poeste, and when they came back, this guy had been removed because he was too bright. He just said he wasn't going to do it again. Stan Car- Stanley, Stanislaw Mikolas Karpinski, my first husband, was born in Poland. His family was over here, but then they knew the shit was coming down. And so they went back to Poland. His two older sisters were born in, in Hamtramck, and then they went back. Michigan. Yeah. We played Hamtramck. Did you? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. It took me forever to figure out how to say that stupid name. Hamtramck? Yeah, there's missing vowels in it. I don't like it. I don't know how it's spelled, but... Yeah, it's, there's a missing... It's yeah. He told me his parents uh, woke up. They woke up, and it was like all the signs were changed from Polish to German or some shit. I can't remember exactly, but... That would be the name of your biography. This is Margot Wallenberg doing an audio reading of her autobiography, I Can't Exactly Remember. And here's <laughs> my husband. He used to buy me this most wonderful, sexy clothing. We were living in the two-room cabin. Overalls? Ca- two-room cabin with an outhouse. And I came home one day, and there he was in my special sexy clothing with putting on makeup and I I said Stan it was it was uh I saw a picture of your mother in, at your house good looking woman isn't she even good uh, fisherman carrying a, 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 a what do you a liner, stringer. A, stringer. a stringer of fish yeah Hey, uh, very interesting. The, no uh, kids. No kids. You have no kids? No, I had... Uh, a polyp population of party on your no, vagina? Actually, your uterus? I had... Um, a cock? <laughs> many. <laughs> All right, we're getting to that fucking drunk history part of... Okay, let me think why I don't have kids. Okay, I'll... Are you trying to remember if you had kids? <laughs> That'd and be funny. Wife. Did you have kids or not? No, I had oh. a lot of baby makers, but I never threw a a kid. Never finished the job. Good for you. I did the best I could. Oh, you wanted kids? Are you kidding? I had great parents. Fabulous parents. I was raised with the most open-minded, wonderful people. I was curious about, I was raised an agnostic. Wow. I'm so fortunate. Did they even have that word back then? Well, I don't know, but I figured that's what they were doing. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to call part two of this Drunk History with Margo. Margo doesn't even know the show Drunk History. I'm certainly glad you're not recording this. (laughs) We would never record or tell you to talk closer to the mic when we're not recording. We're about ready to start, actually. Yeah, we're going uh, to... Ready to start the podcast? 
This is, I told you, we're not going to start for a few drinks. You guys are so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, if the, if the fucking my dogs parents, don't start the cats. My parents, I got curious about religion, you know, because I, like I said, I was raised pretty much, I would think as an agnostic, not an atheist, but an agnostic. I don't know how to actually differentiate. No, However, differentiate agnostic. Everyone is agnostic because no one knows. It's just you admit you don't know. Okay, you still was, don't fucking know. I was know. raised an agnostic. Yes, I, that's everyone's an agnostic. I was never raised an atheist. Whatever that is. What's the definition? The of difference atheist? between I've said this in my act okay. is the difference is. I say I'm atheist because when I say I'm an atheist, I'm discounting what you believe. I don't know as much as you don't know, but I know that your dumb theory is probably wrong. It's uh, agnostic is like saying there could be a Batman. I just don't know. Well, you know there's no fucking Batman, so stop. That's the difference. I say I... atheist where everyone's an agnostic. It's okay. just some, uh, uh, you know, I feel that organized religion is one of the most detrimental and devastating things in the world. Well, you wouldn't be wrong, <laughs> oh, but uh, be right. people, uh, people don't really want to think. I, I understand that to some extent. Okay. You- let me ask you this, Mr. Stanhope. Mm-hmm. How many people do you know that are capable of original thought? Yeah. You don't have to answer it right away. I don't. You, you'd have to really break that down. Original thought? Is there such How many thing? people are capable of original thought? And I prefer to surround myself with whoever they are. I thought I was capable of that before the internet. And now you can Google any idea that you have, and someone already thought of it. What was the one thing where I go, oh, fuck. Oh, really? That's hang on, interesting. Hang on. We, we thought of something. Oh, oh no, no, no hobo. No hobo. Yeah. There, no, no. no homo is a, a, an expression. No the ki- homo. It's an expression the kids use. Like, hey, man, I'd love to come over and uh, hang out with you. No homo. Like, I'm not, uh, that I'm shirt not saying looks that great in a gay on way. You. Hey, like, Doug, that shirt looks great on you. No homo. Right. Like, but dudes it, talking to dudes. I'm so, not a homeboy or like, what is it? No homo. Like, I'm not being gay. Not, not homosexual. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, you look really good. Hey, that haircut looks really good, dude. No homo. So that's an expression. Oh, that's so we, fascinating. We were, I think it was James Inman we were doing it. No, it was uh, wow. Junior. Junior Stopka. Was, no hobo. Whoa. No hobo was a play on that. Like, I, hey, I want to crash on your couch. No hobo. Like, I'm not a bum. I love it. Well, I fucking, we Google it. Oh, a million people already thought of it. There's guys with t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, we, we thought we were geniuses for a second. It was an original thought for us. But, yeah. But it was original thought for you. As, as technology progresses and the universal mind comes into actual you know, being where you can read it online. Yeah. When you, oh, some guy in Singapore already thought of that. Yeah, it might be original to you. It's not original to the, the world. I'm so glad that we're on the other side of this fucking life, lady. We didn't leave litter behind. We have no children. We're just going to fucking die and let them deal with the problems. And you know, I still use my cast iron fucking frying pan, you know? The same one from when you were in... Uh, I use Granny's Alamos. Fork. No, the one that all the Mexicans were intrigued with in they Alamos. They blew Is it their the, minds away. Do you away. have the same cast iron? Of skill? course I do. You still have the same oh, one? Oh, fuck it, hey. <laughs> We're going no, co- I mean, to come so to your house and get a picture they, of that for part so, two of this. They were so... They, I swear to God, that's, that's uh, idiosyncrasy. <laughs> if you could kill any person alive today, celebrity, politician, whoever, if you mm. could kill them, who would it be? 
I don't think I want to kill anybody. I just, you have to. This is one of those well, things. Why, kill him? If you have to kill someone. Putin. Putin? That's just because it's recent. It, yeah, That's the problem. Now, with the, see, see how weak I am. I'm weak. I'm weak. Putin, if, three months ago, I, if I said, you would have never said Putin three months ago. He's just in the news. Actually, I don't want to kill anybody. You're not, it's not, you're a Manchurian candidate. You have to kill someone. I'm going to program your head. Who is it going to be? Alive or dead. We'll go alive or dead. And Hitler. it can't be Hitler. No. <laughs> it can't be Hitler. <laughs> it can't be Hitler. <laughs> okay. What about? All right, in town. Give me. <laughs> no, no, no. no. All, right. No, no, no. All right, that's the end of part uh 1.6 of uh, the podcast. Let's go. Let's eat some hummus and some shrimp cocktail. Done. Out. Drop the mic. I never want to kill anybody. I, I do all the time. I've thought of it. But actually, I'll tell you what. I really want to. This is so fucking weird. Stop recording. <laughs> Hey, that was the end of uh, the drunkenest podcast we might have ever aired. All right, that was... Please hold. Dut, dut, dut. Hey, that was... <laughs> that was a podcast where I tried to keep up with a 75-year-old woman. <laughs> and it, it's drunk history right at this point. And I'm shit-faced, and that was Margo Wallenberg. And this is the Matoid.